y buenos dias. Uh, hello and good morning, everyone. The topic for my presentation today is improving the quality of care in a patient-centered dental practice. Um, these are the contents of my presentation. I will first discuss what patient-centered quality improvement means. Then I will go about talking uh, on uh, quality improvement by means of accreditation. Uh, I will discuss what all options dental clinics have in order to get accredited. Uh, and then I will talk about my focus for today's presentation, dental home accreditation. Uh, I will discuss its benefits, its limitations, and then I will conclude with some recommendations of my own. So first of all, what is patient-centered quality improvement? Now, there are various kinds of quality improvement that you can bring about in your day-to-day -day clinical practice. But patient-centered quality improvement basically concerns itself with A to Z of patient satisfaction, getting improved patient outcomes, getting better patient satisfaction, um, providing care that is evidence-based, which means it's up-to-date with the latest technology, latest research, and latest literature. Um, before I continue, I would like to say that my topic um, for today is very much relevant to people who have their own clinical practices or those of you who are interested in opening their own clinical practices. For academicians amongst you, I hope I talk about something that's valuable and will add something new to your knowledge today. Um, continuing with my presentation, there are various strategies to ensure quality improvement. Um, some dentists use checklists of various kinds. Some go for certification courses. And some try to get their uh, employed healthcare professionals um, various kinds of credentials. But uh, what my concern today is accreditation. Um, accreditation is used for various organizations. It's used for businesses. It's used for hospitals. It's used for schools. Um, and it's used for dental clinics. Accreditation is a very standardized evaluation process that is used to assess the quality of services delivered. And since we are healthcare professionals, it deals with the quality of care that is delivered. What makes it special is that it, fo it follows a very uniform set of criteria, and this criteria keeps getting revised based on new ethical and regulatory issues. If you are running a dental clinic, you have a lot of options um, regarding accreditation. One of them is ambulatory healthcare. Ambulatory healthcare is basically any dental clinic that only performs outpatient based uh, procedures, where you don't require an operating room or a recovery room where patients need to you know, rest for a while after a procedure. The second one is office based surgery or ambulatory surgery. This is an option which is popular for oral and maxillofacial surgeons. Oral and maxillofacial surgeons perform surgeries that require a higher level of anesthesia, so patients need a little bit of time to recover in the clinical practice before they're allowed to go home. So this is, a, this is an option that OMFS um, doctors take up. The third one is a regular dental practice or dental facility. This is by far the most common a kind of accreditation that usually dental clinics go for. It has a set of quality improvement measures that um, dentists follow day in and day out. And lastly, there is dental home accreditation, which is a very, very new concept. Now, I'm not sure how many of you have heard of dental home, but it's a fairly recent concept. It has come about only in the last 10 to 15 years. And my paper is probably one of the uh, only few papers of its kind currently present in, the lit in literature today. Um, dental home was inspired by something called medical home. Medical home came about in the 1970s, so it's been almost 40 to 50 years. And the reason medical home came about is um, because doctors felt that when they were dealing with special needs children, they required their families to be present in the same you know, treatment area. Um, gradually, this concept widened to include all kinds of pediatric patients. 
doctors realized that, you know, if I include the family of the patient, then I will be able to provide better care for my patient. Of course, as everything goes, this concept widened and increased and uh, started to expand and involve all kinds of patients, pediatric, adolescent, and even geriatric patients. Doctors realized that if we involve the family of the patient, if we get the family's dental and medical history, we will be able to provide a more comprehensive form of care. Um, in the early 2000s, a couple of dentists realized that, you know what, this concept seems to be working well for doctors. Why don't we use it? And that's when the, the whole concept of dental home was born. So a dental home is basically um, a center that provides services that are patient-centered, concerning itself completely uh, with the patient's well-being, comprehensive, which means they provide every kind of care, either directly or indirectly, regular and well-structured kind of services, and that which involves the family of the patient. So what are the characteristics of a dental home? First of all, relationship. The entire idea of it being called dental home is that it's a home. So you're building familiarity with the patient, with his family, and in that, in that whole process of building familiarity, you're reducing the anxiety level of your patient. How many of us have seen patients who come in and say, you know what, doctor, I'm super scared of you. Everyone gets patients like that. But with a dental home, the chance of that happening is very less because the patient is used to you, his entire family has been visiting you for, for a while, so he's very comfortable with you. Secondly, continuity of care. Dental home provides services that um, ensure that you will be going to the same dental home for years in advance. So you're, you're basically visiting the same set of dentists for a long time, and that is a really great relationship builder. Another thing is coordination of care. Now, your dental home may not comprise of specialists. It may not have pediatric dentists, or it may not necessarily have a prosthodontist, but it will arrange a prosthodontist for you if the need arises. So it basically becomes your one-stop shop. You go there, and they can direct you to people who you may need in the future. Thirdly, comprehensiveness. It's a comprehensive form of care. Um, uh, they believe in providing appropriate and well-timed care, so you don't, um, you don't, basically it, pr it tries to focus on preventive care rather than treatment based on need. Um, culturally competent. Culturally competent is very relevant to our world today. Um, it basically means keeping in mind religious sensibilities, political views, linguistic um, requirements of the patient. So your dental home becomes somebody who is very supportive of all of your views and takes it in the right manner. Um, another point is accessibility. What makes your dental home special is that it's accessible 365 days a year, 24 seven hours a day. And lastly, quality. The quality of care provided at a dental home is of a very, very high standard and it is of course evidence-based. So what are the benefits of a dental home for the patient? First of all, any uh, dental practice that decides to get itself accredited as a dental home becomes uh, better at managing risks, becomes better at providing patient safety. That is a huge benefit for a patient. Secondly, because the dental home believes in providing appropriate and timely care, um, it becomes a very cost-effective situation for the patient. Um, thirdly, coordination of services. It's no longer the patient's headache to find himself an orthodontist or a pediatric dentist. The dental home will arrange that for you. And lastly, it's a very personalized program. Because your dental home has information of your family and of your background, they are in tune with your family's requirements and with your requirements. So it's a very personalized and specific program to you. What are the benefits for you as a dentist? Um, Any one of you who has been through an accreditation process before knows that it's a very educational process. When the accrediting agency comes in, 
they look at the way you're running your clinic, and they make recommendations that, you know what, this is not so good. Maybe you could do something else. And this is very educational for you as a dentist. It teaches you how to make things more better. Um, the second thing is um, accrediting, accrediting agencies tend to provide a good framework for how you should go about organizing the structure in your clinic, how to manage things better, and that is another huge benefit. And lastly, um, if the situation arises that you are getting sued by a patient, the fact that you are accredited by a good organization, it gives you a certain amount of access to liability coverage. But of course, everything is not as rosy as it seems. Everything comes with some kind of limitation, and so does accreditation. The first thing is cost. The process is not cheap. It is expensive. There is a fee for application. There is a fee for um, getting the accrediting uh, agency people to come and visit your practice and to survey everything. So that is something we need to keep in mind. Secondly, time. Um, according to latest re research, getting your practice accredited can take from two to three months amount of time. I'm not saying two to three months of valuable patient time, but two to three months of general amount of time that you could have been spending doing other things. Um, and this is not just your time, it's also the time of your dental assistants who will be helping you in the process. And lastly, paperwork. There is bureaucratic paperwork in everything and accreditation is no exception. Um, in conclusion, I would like to say that um, dental home accreditation may not be for everyone. It might not be for every dental clinic, but it is a concept that is worth accepting and it's a concept worth embracing for the dental profession in general. Um, it helps us achieve quality improvement, which is an important goal for us for all of us to strive towards. Um, as recommendations, um, I would like to recommend to all of you who are into private practice to think about accreditation if you haven't already thought about it. Um, there are a lot of benefits that you can get from that. The benefits definitely outweigh the limitations. Um, and with that, uh, these are my references. And thank you for listening to my presentation. Thank you. We have a uh, last of time for uh, questions. Are there any questions for uh, Professor Dash Pandit? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I will, you've, you've asked me two questions, so I'll answer the first one first. Um, yes, uh, dental home is a very new concept and it is currently provided only by one accrediting agency, it's called AAAHC, and in the US, Accrediting Association of Ambulatory Healthcare, um, and they're doing a fantastic job with it. It's become a very, very popular in, in California. There are a number of practices that have gotten themselves accredited as a dental home. Um, it will take a few years for this concept to come to develop in countries like India. And um, for that to happen, there will be a lot of other regulatory procedures required, but I'm sure it, it's going in that direction slowly but surely. Your second question is, what is the difference between a surgical center, which is 24-7 operable and dental home? Um, now, a dental home can be run by a general dentist. Um, but a surgical center is completely different. Uh, a surgical center will not be um, as will not be providing comprehensive care. Uh, neither will it be involving the family of the patient at any point. Um, the dental home, one of its fundamental ideals, is involving the family of the patient. Um, getting the entire family of the patient is involved in every step of the way. That's what makes it really different. The second thing is comprehensive care. So it's, like I said, it's a one-stop shop. It's not just surgery, it's everything. You have your endodontist, you have your pediatric dentist, or you have people that they will refer you to. Um, so that is the fundamental difference between dental home and a regular surgical center. 
Did that answer your question? As I said, it's, it's, it's a concept that is not for, it's, maybe it's not something everyone can do, but it is definitely something that um, centers which have a lot of general dentists could practice, um, especially in areas where you need that kind of service. For example, if you're in an underdeveloped part of the, um, a part of the city where you do need people to provide 24-7 care because you might get those kind of patients who have problems. So in that kind of situation where you have a number of dentists working in the same practice, um, a dental home accreditation would really, really help. Um, currently, the kind of practices that are accredited as dental homes in the US, particularly in California, are the ones that have a number of general dentists working in the same practice. For them, it makes a lot of sense to do something like that. Are there any questions? Uh, we still have about five or six minutes. Right. Now, uh, I know you have a rich experience in this. Uh, in terms of outcomes assessment, now, uh, for the um, uh, practitioners out there, what would you suggest if they wish to uh, assess the outcomes, whether or not they are providing uh, high quality dental care? Um. Well, it really depends on at what. So as I said, um, there are different kinds of quality improvement. And there's, it de are, are you trying to say only patient outcomes, clinical outcomes? No, from the perspective of the patient. Of the so, patient. Yeah. Um, my research has been purely focused on um, quality improvement by means of uh, accreditation or certification of dental practices. So I can only talk about that. Um, I think there is a lot of relevance and a lot of value uh, when you go for such procedures, accreditation and certification, because these agencies really teach you how to organize the structure in your, in your particular business. Um, there was one paper I read, uh, it was published a couple of years ago about three uh, oral surgeons in New York who wrote about their experiences in getting their surgical centers accredited. And all of them said the same thing, that it was costly, it was time consuming, a lot of paperwork, but very educational. I learned what I was doing wrong, and I corrected those mistakes and made my practice more cost effective and I made it better. So if you're looking for improving clinical outcomes uh, for your patients and making your practice more effective, Accreditation is definitely one of the good options that you have there in the market. Of course, there are other things. You could use different kinds of checklists that you could make yourself and say, suppose, okay, if this is the procedure, I'm going to have one, two, three, four steps, and I'm going to tick mark, make sure that I'm doing all of those things right. But if you have uh, another outside body coming in and telling you exactly how to run things, it would help you a lot. Any other questions?